Mr. Brandon got us a new Classroom of the Elite video. This was some bull. You know, I can't say it. I'm going to get demonetized. Episode 11 review. Let's go. So this week's episode of Classroom of the Elite had to throw in some interference and cause some BS to occur. So Anokoji's class does end up losing. And it's... What is the penalty for losing? The captain doesn't get expelled because Anokoji was protected. But like, what's going to happen now? You know? It's like, are we going to drop down? What is the consequences of this? And like, I'm more interested in not just what's going to happen to us. I'm more interested in what the fuck has happened with Ichinose and Ryuin's class, right? Because I don't see Ryuin losing. Ryuin can't lose. Legitimately, Ryuin cannot lose because he needs to make him to second year. It makes no sense to sacrifice him right now, right? So that means Ryuin class wins and they go up? So maybe B class, like the end of first year, we'll just we're just gonna remain the same status quo, right? A class remains A class. Each no say holds her spot because D class right now, Ryu and they don't have enough points, but they still won. So then maybe they go up to C class and Iona Koji because we lost. C class coach drops to D class is my assumption basically due to interference like that's what it's chalked up to and what's funny was i was taking a look before i got up here because i was just interested to see i was like oh man i wonder if everyone else is a little pissed off that uh the interference happened and it was really funny because there's just a bunch of chess players upset that the chess match didn't make a lot of sense so i guess were there a bunch of sweaty chess players that was actually upset like i i wasn't really paying attention to the chess i i feel like Look, they played a chess game, but the focus was not really on chess, right? Sure, there were some chess moves here and there. I'm sure there's some, I don't know, the weight, the pieces were still on the board. I'm too much of a fucking idiot to ever tell you guys what the fuck is going on during chess. But, like, the focus wasn't really chess, right? Chess was simply the medium of the battle. But I'm sure a lot of people were very upset, like, hmm, Actually, I and Okoji could have had checkmate in two, but this is bullshit. Yes, if you care about chess, I know literally jack all about chess. It's, Same. It's just pieces moving to me. I've never learned the game, so... So it's all just kind of a blur. Same. I just take whatever happens. And I guess in this case, very similar to being an anime only and not knowing the source material, I got to enjoy the chess match a lot more because similar to source readers being saying, no, the anime is actually bad. I guess mm. the chess match was as well because it was just very simple. Well, did we even get to see the chess match though? Like, like straight up, like they were fucking moving pieces around and suddenly the board fucking shifts. And there's like, I don't know, three critical moments that they show you for a second. I feel like it didn't really matter, right? Where they're doing moves that were literally the worst things you could do. Also, one thing I want to quickly add before I jump into this. We only saw one move get manipulated, so it's entirely possible all of the oh. moves that they were making at the end with True. involved could have been... I mean, it's not guaranteed, but there's a possibility. Altered. So, whether or not that's true, if you are upset by maybe the game not making too much sense, that's probably one way to maybe not be too upset if the chess match was a little sloppy. For me, what came down to the BS was the fact that this man had to interfere because... If they were in person, this never would have happened, but because when they took over to tell them where to move, the commands could read differently on their screen. With Susan has a huge forehead right now. I'm not sure if you guys can see just like me right now, but I have something about the Susan picture in the background looks funny to me. With a little interference, which is ultimately what cost them the game. But as we see after the credits, we get to see how it would have went down. If exactly, and Koji would have won because they replayed the exact same thing, simulated to the last move, and he won. It would have actually went according to his directions, which would have been a victory. But when you have protection points and everything else like that, it kind of leads to things happening in ways that uh, no one can really quite expect or care for. And it, just honestly, it was a good episode. Like, you can't ignore the fact that it was fast-paced, but in a lot of ways, what was fast-paced about it all the fucking matches getting blown away. Well, honestly, compared to the mountain arc, remember the mountain arc? There were a couple exams, but they straight up skipped everything. One, they, they, they skipped everything. Like the fucking meditation test. There was a bunch of other tests too, I can't remember. But they, they just straight up just skipped fucking everything. So I was like, ah, whatever. So this time, even if there was a PowerPoint presentation for the basketball scene, they did put in a little bit when EK and Sudo had their combo move going on, you know. We got the mental math. We got K choking during the fucking, what was it, the English test? That she definitely didn't fucking study, right? But I don't know. It was nice that we got to see at least um, all the tests being covered. Even just a little glimpse of it. It doesn't really bother me because like all those like written tests and stuff, I really don't care about. I think we got to see a bit with the basketball, which was nice. I would have preferred seeing a bit more of the archery and the chess mm. game was fun.
My bad. Archery, bro. Our Anokoji group guy, I still don't know his, know his name, but he's legit. The purple haired dude, that guy's legit. Akito? Akito? I don't know anything about chess. You know, there definitely was. You can tell it was kind of speeding by things similar to the um, track and field. Ex what was it? The track and field day? I think that was also. Yeah, the, tra the second season's track, uh, the sports festival, everything was kind of skipped, right? And like, well, not everything was skipped, but a lot of things were skipped. And like the animations were pretty wonky, right? They kind of just saved everything for the running scene, which is, I guess, the only scene that matters. Pretty uh, fast paced, but at the same time, like a lot of that I don't really care about seeing. And the big thing I wanted to see was more with especially Arasu and Aino Koji. Mm -hmm. And everything they did with the White Room was really exhilarating. I do have a full live reaction, though, to this week's episode of Classroom of the Elite over on my Patreon. If you want to see my full and thoughts Check it out. this episode or any of these episodes, it's over there if you're interested. Now, first things first, the White Room stuff. The White mm. Room stuff was really good. I mean, when you start an episode and you're skipping the opening, you know you're in for some crazy things. And Got baited when I said opening time, but yeah, anytime there's no openings, shit's gonna get fucking real. Or like the anime episode just starts with the credits, like the opening credits just scrolling, and there's like no opening, it's like a serious mood, it's like, oh, this is gonna be one of those episodes. And we kind of get to see you know, a bit more and really some clarity on Arasu as a character. It doesn't change the fact that this man's building a harem whether he likes it or not. Like, by the end of the episode, I mean, it's crystal clear, like, this man has a harem whether he... Does he have a harem? Yeah? Yeah, but is Arisu included? Th does does Arisu care like that? Now, a a Arisu cared about reaching Ayanokoji's heart and giving him that warmth, but is there any romantic interest there? I couldn't really tell if Arisu actually romantically cares about Anakoji or if she's just a good person and she just cares for Anakoji because he was raised in such a brutal environment, right? I'm not sure if love is there, but goddamn, Arisu's thongs are skyrocketing ever since the last episode he wants it or not but the idea of you know these artificial geniuses and the white room was trying to build i mean the dad was an absolute piece of garbage i mean don't give him any special treatment just because he's my son like this is it's just you pr what, 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 what do you want mr brandon you want you want anakoji papa to you know favor anakoji because he's his son nepotism is that what you want he's, he's a he's promoting nepotism no that's kind of fucked up though how you know he's saying strip everything from anakoji you know it's like treat him just the worst ever possible because the whole point of the white room is no matter how shitty their genetic is, if they go through the white room class, they're going to become elites. That's the idea, right? Pretty much like this is the type of dude who would have given you a dog, shot the dog in front of you and said, don't get connected. That's the vibes. No, no. Anakoji's dad would have bought a puppy and gave Anakoji time to hang out with the puppy and get close together. And then he would have shot the dog and said, never get close to anyone again. Remember this pain in your heart. Never get attached to anybody. That's what he would have done. I get from that guy. And the idea that, you know, you start the first scene of this episode with him playing chess in the white room to then by the end of this exam, playing chess. The thing that she's basically wanted since she first laid eyes on Aino Koji and how sad of an existence she pretty much thought his life was and the fact that, you know, her father figure was completely different than Aino Koji's. The idea of- How the fuck does Sakai's dad get even involved in this? Because he was like right-hand man of Papa Koji in the white room. I don't know how it all started, but he did leave at the end. But even like now, when he was talking to Odyssey, he's like, make sure that, you know, if the white room becomes like a cultural thing in the future and everybody has like an institution like this, make sure it never happens, right? I'm sure there is some reason why, you know, Odyssey's dad had to get involved, but it's just kind of very interesting how a man like him who opposes the white room, like, is involved in it. Maybe it never started off like that. Maybe it started off as a very idealistic, good thing, and Sakayanagi was all in, uh, all involved, and then Koji Papa got fucking... He just fucking lost it. You know, he's doing some crazy shit, and... I don't know. I don't know. Volume Zero stuff, yeah. I'm never gonna read it until the anime actually adapts it. And will the anime actually adapt it? Who fucking knows, man? Dude, could you imagine if they had a fucking movie for Volume Zero? Straight up. Give us, right before Season 4 announcement, give us a fucking movie. Classroom of the Elite Volume Zero, two-hour fucking movie adapted. Like, wanting to defeat, but also prove the fact that it's okay to let people in, which was really the big thing about After the Credits. It was kind of like the actual chess master again going exactly the way it was. Talks about how it's like, you know, it's okay to let people in. And then, I don't know, it, there was something nice about that because a character who's always had my suspicions mm. and my, my skeptical energy towards her. By the end of this episode, I'm just like, you know, she's a good she person. Might be one of my favorite female characters in this show. Like, I think a lot of people feel the same way, right? Everyone thought that the smug lolly was just a fucking smug lolly. 
She got the fucking cane. She's looking down on people. What she got going on? You know, she's so sinister, but not really. In fact, she's so nice. She might be one of the most wholesome, nice people, other than each no say, right? In in the school. She cared about him the entire time. It's just that we didn't know what her interests were, right? So and again, with this revelation, I think Arisu stonks. I, that Arisu stonks are just fucking skyrocketing, man. Like, I think Horikita is still number one for me, but like everything she's offered, especially in this season particular, has been really, really exhilarating. And I like her addition to the story a lot more than initially I thought. I mean, Suzune? We, we are, should we shit on Suzune right now? Should we shit on Suzune or no? Nah? Is she doing well? Yeah, she is doing well. I'm just really harsh on her from the memes. I mean, for a while, I kind of wanted her expelled. Now I'm like, I want to <laughs> see where she goes from here. Wait, 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 wait. Are we talking about Susan right now, right? Wait, 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 wait. One for me, but like, she might be one of my favorite female okay, characters okay, okay. in the show. Like, I think Horikita is still number one for me, but like, everything she's offered, especially in this season particular, has been really, really exhilarating. I don't know who he's talking about in terms of she. I think it's still in the context of Arisu, yeah. And I like her addition to the story a lot. Yeah, I think it makes sense because he says Suzune is like his favorite like female character. More than initially I thought. Yeah. I mean, for a while I kind of wanted her expelled. Now I just wanted to kick her fucking cane. And I think I still think it's hilarious that we can just kick her walking cane like that, right? I, I think it's hilarious now. I don't want to do it as much anymore because a smug lolly is such a wholesome kind-hearted lolly but you know like, it's, it's funny see where she goes from here and i like what they did because they didn't really waste too much time or let the white room stuff linger for too long immediately when they transition back to present day you want to see more of that so then when they do mm -hmm. give you a little more taste a little more extra in the mid portion of the episode it feels warranted you know it's good to leave the viewers wanting more than let they're fucking just Sprinkling just little crumbs of the white room, huh? Really teasing the anime only. The white room stuff drag out, kind of piece together a little bit as it goes, and it was really good. The first thing we get to see is basketball, which was nice because we did get to see a little strategy there, which was appreciated. So the idea that, you know, our uh swap pseudo in and then it's like, oh, pseudo's mental game is fucking weak, and then Koji was like, You're wrong, he's changed. Then Pseudo does a fucking kudo kuno basket pass, and then it goes to Ike and fucking, you know, they get a fucking basket. Class was winning like three points ahead or something. I think it was like eight to five, something like that. And Ido Koji steps in and swaps out one of the members for a stronger member, which is interesting because, you know, they're winning. They don't really need to do anything. Hondo got swapped out. Feels bad, man. Hondo is the weakest link. EK really carried, huh? But clearly the play was... EK straight up is getting drafted into the NBA at this rate, bro. He has balled his life. Is that, you know, it was going to let the timer go down pretty close to nothing. And then the other class was going to absolutely hammer them when they least expect it because they were holding back. So, you know, it, it was a good play overall. And I know Koji immediately saw through all the BS. And then there was a bunch of different written tests. There was like a typing test, you know, just different things. One of the ones that was very fun was uh, the, uh, I think it was a mental math. Yeah. Like, oh, it's never not going to be funny to see this man just not give a shit. Like, based Giga Chat just fucking didn't answer anything till the end. And people are saying that Konji might have opened his eyes just to see the numbers at the very end, right? But I don't even know what, like, so there's a series of questions that you're supposed to answer from 1 to 10, and, and it got progressively harder till the end. Most people dropped out around question 6 or 7, but Koenji fucking answered 10 with his eyes closed the entire time. Now, I'm sh maybe the numbers that pertains to question 10 would have shown up at the very end, or did all the numbers matter from the beginning? That's what I don't really know, but I, in my head canon, Koenji just fucking guessed it through sheer intuition, and he fucking just answered. That's my head canon. He's just sitting there with his eyes closed. Just n he's maybe he was peeking. He maybe he was no peeking. Interest in this at all? And honestly, it's hilarious. It, it can be. I'm. I imagine I'd be pulling my hair out if I was one of these characters. But as a viewer, it's just funny and out of pocket, and I really appreciate it. Now, the chess game. Oh, nobody talks about the Matsushita moment. It was a very uh, brief moment, right? I wouldn't have caught it unless you guys are keeping me in track. But Matsushita did have a very, you know, huh? You know, when Anakoji answered the 10th question. So Anakoji's suspicion levels to Matsuchita. Matsuchita is pretty much confirming that, hmm, this guy is not an NPC. How the fuck? Did you get all the positive points from class A? How the fuck are you answering the last question here? What's going on, Anakoji, right? So this is slowly leading into future of, you know, other side characters. That's actually getting some spotlight. Michan's coming around, you know, Matsuchita's, you know, coming around. I would say even Haruka, Akito, you know, Keisei, they've all been there since season two, but what the fuck is Sakura doing? Three fucking seasons. Three fucking seasons, still nothing. Still nothing. What is she doing?
You're gonna tell me season four? Most of you guys fucking said, no, bro, trust me. Season three, I promise. Season three. I'm like, we got two episodes left. If she doesn't do anything in these last two episodes, she's dog shit. Actually waste of fucking frames. Even the director knows. The director literally puts Sakura in the frame and they don't let her talk, dude. What is going on? I like what they did. Didn't understand what was happening. I mean, I'm just going off of what the characters are saying. Was that good? Was that bad? And like I said, apparently it was a very poorly optimized chess match. If you know anything about chess is what it is. I mean, that's not going to bother me personally because I don't play the game. But I like, let's get real. Who's actually bothered by the chess game? Actual chess players. What's the percentage of actual hardcore chess players that had criticisms over this of the overall fan base of class and elite? I'd say less than fucking 5%. I'd say probably like fucking 1% were mad, dude. Who gives a fuck, right? They're fucking elitist and they're probably right. They're probably right that the chess match was bullshit. But I would argue, maybe they should have done the research, right? Maybe they should have done the research and had better plays. But the fact that him and me who barely know anything about chess. I know how the chess pieces move for, for complete noobs to be able to watch this and kind of at least understand what's going on. I feel like the anime did its job, you know? They did their job in trying to portray what is going on in this chess match for people that don't even know the game, right? That's the point I'm trying to make. Yes, should they have done the research and try to make actual chess plays? Sure, that would have been a lot better. But again, that's like the 1% who gives a fuck about that, right? So it's like, it's not that big a deal to me, but I understand why people are mad. I can understand why people would be like, wait, so this is like, you know, some white room genius and I'm clearly more intelligent at chess than him. I'm questioning the education system. At this point, I would just chalk it up to like, you just kind of have to suspend your sense of disbelief and understand that most likely in a written form, yep. the chess match was easier to get away with than um, in seeing it in visualization in terms of an anime. So yeah, like, would it be better if they, you know, got some professional chess player to like map out the match? Probably, but you know, it, you know, it, it is not a big deal. If this not was a like deal. a chess anime specifically, I would then it matters, that yes. Complain, but for me, it's like we barely are gonna see chess anyway, so it's kind of is what it is. But I do get the frustration, yeah. Of course, chess is huge nowadays, but I'm talking about anime people, people watching Class of the Elite. If we did a survey and asked people how many people are actually upset and how many of those people were actual chess players. Like, it's gonna be less than 5%. That's the point I'm making. And the other point I'm making is that most people aren't chess players. They don't know what the fuck is going on. But for the anime to be able to tell people what's going on without them knowing chess, I'm saying that what they did, even though it was very unoptimal chess moves, they still did what they did. Like, they, they still, you know, uh, what's the word? They got their point across, right? They got their point across to people that don't even know what the fuck is going on in chess. And I saw some people point out. For me, I just didn't know what the hell was happening. It was looking like we were going to win. That looked like we were going to lose. And then both of them tapped in giving the commands. And when it was revealed that he lost. That's another show, right? Queen's Gambit. That's another series specifically about chess, right? Now, if an anime that focuses on chess, right? If that had bad chess moves, if that had poorly unoptimized, you know, chess moves, then yes, that's like an actual problem. But in Classroom of the Elite, like, is it that big of an issue? I'm just more fucking upset that they skipped the basketball scenes, Dan. Oh, so I was just like, I was kind of stumped, right? Because I'm like, it's Ano Koji. Like, it's not even just that he's the main character. I just don't see people beating him at chess. Like, that was the specific reason. Not only chess, at anything, right? He said, if I tried, if I actually gave a fuck, no one can beat me. Now, when he said that to Susan, that was in the context of chess. But apparently, it meant everything and when this douchebag this douche nozzle except that cheating against kishiro man kishiro fucking he got a quick one on us he did i mean what the fuck are we supposed to do like if, if a student is cheating against another student i would understand right but if the fucking principal is cheating to backstab you it's like it's not even backstab it might have to, it might as well be a fucking front step because kishiro is not hiding any intentions like what the fuck are we supposed to do man pops up being like ho 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 why didn't you say and it's like the fact that you had these little scumbags changing the commands that horikita would see it's just like why why are you why well that's a very good question why does kishiro do that did he want Ayanokoji to lose so that he could drop down, so that he could get closer to getting expelled, more unfavorable positions? Like, I guess that is like level one thinking, right? The most intuitive, logical conclusion to why Skishiro is doing this shit. Why is he even here? 
to get out of Koji expelled because he's an agent of the White Room and Papa Koji wants him back at the White Room. So Skishiro making him lose, losing points, getting demoted. I, I think that makes sense, but maybe there is a little bit more to it. I, I don't know. That's right, the protection points are gone, exactly. Him just for shits and giggles to kick her over and then to throw our boy against the wall again. Like, again. That's the type of vibe I yes. was getting. Yes, yes. It is what it is. I also quite like the... I'm telling you, man. There's a lot of anime characters, right? This is a common trope, a cliche, if you would say, where an anime character, they show up and they never fucking open their eyes. They have it shut closed. They have it shut closed. And they seem kind of chill, but they're very mysterious. But there's always that one moment where they finally do open their eyes. Or sometimes it's not just like closing the eyes. It's like the bangs are covering their eyes, you know? The eyes are just... You don't see anything. And then when they finally open, it's a crazy fucking scene, dude. It is what it is. I also quite like the music placement throughout the episode. There's about two or three points that just like the Talking about placement, I like Brandon's placement in this frame, obscuring this piece of shit character that's been wasting my fucking time. Music they were playing for a good one or two minutes at a time just, it really captured a vibe that kind of made it feel exciting, but also you kind of, the hairs on your arms were standing up just a little because you were a little concerned, if not getting nauseous on where it was going to go. Like the, like the opening playing there, the chest mask to kind of hype stuff up, right? But either yeah. way, this episode was some bullshit. We lost because of interference, which is infuriating. Yeah. It's probably going to be infuriating to chess players because the, apparently the match makes no sense. Akito, Giga Chad. So despite it probably feeling rushed, I mean, there's we had to have skipped a lot of things, but I think what we skipped was okay for me. But I could also tell that maybe seeing a bit more on the archery side would have been nice and maybe even a little more on the basketball and stuff like that. Yeah. The written text. Or like if there was a dodgeball match. And where the fuck? Uh, if I just want this fucking dodgeball and see Albert fucking playing dodgeball or some shit and just fucking cranking a dodgeball into a little kid because he's so huge. Yes, I could give no shits about like that's okay skipping over. But overall, I enjoyed this episode and I'm excited to see where they're gonna go because I didn't expect how they're gonna wrap it up. So let me know what you're feeling down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. Brandon a sub to his channel. Like his video videos if you did. Um, I am very interested in how we're gonna wrap up the season, huh? We got two episodes left. What are, what are we going to do, huh? It feels like this was the final arc, right? We've wrapped up season one. Uh, sorry, season, first year should be closing off where the hierarchy of this class structure is. Again, I think it's going to be returning back to the beginning where Ryuin climbs to C class. We drop back to the D class and Ichinose stays there at B and Arisu at A. But it's like, are we going to now do setup for like season four shit? Or are we going to cover fucking, you know, are we going to cover an entire fucking arc in two episodes and it's going to be rushed? Who really knows, but I'll be there. Will you?